everyone, it's Nicole Spore for Plan With Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be decorating our weekly classic vertical spread. This is for the week of December the 13th through the 19th. And yes, I said my classic vertical because this week, my next video, I actually am gonna do my very first dashboard spread. So that video will come tomorrow, um, stay tuned for that, and I will talk a little bit more about that in that video. As I did last week, I'm using wax paper to lay out my stickers before transferring them to my actual spread. And I am voicing over today. I was actually watching a movie as I was doing these. And so I know it's completely craziness, but I was watching it and I decided we're gonna voice over this week. And also it will shorten the video just a tad. So, you know, I'll probably do a combination of voice over or I will actually talk it through as I'm doing it. Drop me a note in the comments. Let me know kind of what you prefer and we will go from there. So, I think my most recent video was my doodle bug haul that I just got from Simon Says Stamp and I knew it, I left it out. I did not even put these stickers away because I knew I was going to be using them for my spread and I actually used them for my two spreads I'm going to be sharing first and just absolutely love them. That's all there is to say. I know I talked about my love of Doodlebug. Um, I even went and bought more Doodlebug because apparently I need all of the Doodlebug. So I had this idea. The minute I saw this sticker book, I knew I wanted to create a village and I wanted to have the gondolas kind of going through this wintry, snowy scene. So a lot of this spread is taken up with a scene. Um, that isn't really the reason behind doing two spreads this week and why you're gonna see a dashboard spread from me. Um, that's completely a work-related thing because as I am navigating two YouTube channels and two social media profiles, I felt like I maybe needed to separate work from personal. So I'm gonna keep my, we're gonna try this. Obviously with planning, and you guys know this if you're planners, um, especially like with the happy planner, well, probably any planning, I shouldn't even say just happy planner, any planning, your process may change until you settle on what exactly works for you. And what I've been finding is that my vertical planner is not enough room to write everything. Probably if I didn't decorate it at all, I likely could fit everything, maybe, maybe, um, but, what fun is that? I like decorating it. Um, I think that's why we all get into this is that we love to decorate. Um, but I do want it to be functional. And I thought maybe if I just had two sections, one work, one personal, that would work great. So that's what we're gonna try. We're gonna see how this goes. I know that there are other planners here on YouTube who do that and that's kind of what inspired me to give this a try this week. Back to my scene, we're going to kind of ground everything on some washi tape. I'm going to have mountains and gondolas. And by the way, thank you to the YouTuber who helped me. I don't know why gondola was completely just out of my mind when I did my uh, sticker book video, sticker book, my haul video for Doodlebug, but I couldn't think of it. Um, so this whole scene is gonna take up the bottom two rows of boxes. The whole top row is going to be checklists. Checklist stickers are my favorite, um, next to box stickers, obviously. I think we all love box stickers, but I love checklists because those really tend to work well for me. This is going to be more of the personal family life type of spread, so this ought to give me plenty of room. I am going to add a few boxes down in the scene. Um, you're gonna see that here in a little bit. It's going to be minimal. Those are gonna be like appointment or activity-based boxes when I know I have things going on, um, I'm gonna pop that kind of thing into those. So like I know I have an eyebrow appointment this week. Um, my dogs, one of them has a vet appointment. They both have grooming appointments. Um, we're going to see Spider-Man on Friday because my 16-year-old is absolutely uh, so, so excited about it. Um, so we're gonna do that. Um, it's going to be really fun. So it's a, it's a fun week, but I'm loving building this scene. Now, 
I know uh, one of the things that I tend to like to do for the most part, not always, you've kind of seen me do a couple of layouts without Disney, is I like to incorporate Disney. Um, so there is going to be two little surprise Disney images in this spread, and I will show you that here in a little bit. I am looking for my checklists. Um, I'm going to look for a long box sticker. So I wanna talk about what stickers I'm using. I am using the Doodle Bug Let It Snow mini icons. They, they even say right on the package, perfect for planners and calendars. Um, that long sticker side, I don't know if my sticker, I don't have my sticker sheet out right now, but it's a red and white stripe like the washi. Um, you could trim that and create your own sticker washi with it, but it says you can punch this with your punch. So let's say your happy planner punch and stick the sticker sheets in your planner for use, which I think is really clever. The other sticker book I'm using here is probably, I have multiples of this sticker book because I love it so much. It is the Colorful Boxes from the Happy Planner. I really wish that they would do more of these in like all the colorways, like a Christmas, a Christmas one. I would like to see them do a fall one. I would like to see them do like jewel tones or muted colors or I don't know. This is my favorite sticker book. It's completely, I, I hate to use the word blah, but it's not an exciting sticker book, but it is my most used and favorite. That's why I have multiples because it's basic. Um, next, I am using the Happy Planner. You can see Mickey there. This is the mini Mickey and Friends sticker book. I think this is from their very first Disney release that was last year. This is what got me into the Happy Planner. But these little tiny Mickey and Minis I thought would be perfect. So we've got Mickey dancing in the little wintry scene, but then Minnie is going to be peeking around the side of this building. And I just thought these were close enough in size and I thought it would be a fun little nod to the Disney theme to add to my spread. Um, so that's kind of my plan. Um, things are going to shift and change just a tiny bit as I transfer these over to my planner, but for the most part, it's going to look like this. I did pick a long sticker box to go in the sidebar where I could maybe jot some other notes and things, and I'm gonna go ahead and just stick that down. Um, and then, be so the top row of my spread this week is got check boxes, or check boxes, check lists. So there's not a ton of decoration up high. So by moving my long box down lower in the sidebar, I can create a little teeny tiny scene up above my box, which I think is going to be cute. And it's going to bring some interest up high. And I chose some of the snowmen and a little penguin and then some hearts up here. One of the things I wanna make mention of is these Doodlebug sheets have so many stickers. You guys, I used so many stickers on this spread, um, but you, you know, you can't take it with you. So I decided I wanted to do exactly what I wanted to do. Even using this many stickers, you're gonna see on my dashboard spread I share tomorrow, I used probably just as many on that spread and I still have loads of stickers left. So you get a ton of stickers um, in this set. I really love them, obviously. And it was really fun to kind of do something different and it was fun to combine Doodlebug with a Happy Planner. Um, don't be afraid to mix and match the supplies in your stash. I love that little trio and again, bringing up something, a little tiny you know, scene or imagery up high helps balance this design. It's very, very bottom heavy. I thought I might put my washi down low, but ultimately I decided I didn't like that. And then the other thing you're gonna notice is I end up, I, I thought I was going to cut my washi straight across. I gotta tell you guys, I'm not a straight across washi girl for the, for the most part. I personally like my washi cut at an angle or torn. And so um, I'm gonna fix that. I know I cut it straight across here, but I think the little imperfection of cutting it at an angle and I will be layering it with another washi makes it so much more interesting to look at. For me, this is just something I think that's held over from my scrapbooking days and really, even if I use washi on cards, which I don't use it that often, but when I do, I like it at an angle. I like it torn or at an angle. 
when I designed the scene down below, I was really conscious and aware of picking images that were size and scale appropriate. What does that mean? Well, in the sticker sheets, so we have our snowmen that I put up above our long box in the sidebar. They're big. They're not going to be the right size and scale for our scene, especially when you look at Santa in his truck and how small he is and then the reindeer in the barn. There are reindeer images and there's a Santa Im several Santa images and several reindeer images in this sticker set. They're a lot bigger. So you're gonna see on my dashboard layout tomorrow, I went with the bigger images and built scenes with those, but we're building scenes with the smaller things today. So all of my little buildings are and trees, they all flow together. And I think this really comes from my card making. I love scenes. I love scene building. It is my favorite thing to do in card making. And I feel like no matter the medium that you are creating in, go with what you love. Do it. Do what you love. Um, just because I love scenes doesn't mean that's the only thing I create. I love florals. I love creating, you know, um, little collages of boxes and whatnot. There are no hard and fast rules in crafting. And I think it's so important to remember that. So I would love if you guys would drop me a note in the comments and let me know what is your very favorite way of designing a spread. Um, and remember, there's no right or wrong. I just flat told you I like creating a scene. <laughs> And if that means I'm going to need multiple spreads for my weekly information um, and for the functionality of my planner, that is totally okay. But some people might want to keep their uh, design to a minimum. That's okay too. That's awesome. So you can see down here at the bottom, I layered a black, kind of a black on black stripe washi over the red and white diagonal and I love it. Now here is where my card making comes in clutch. I wanted to draw in some swooping gondola wires or cable, not wires, cables. And I decided to grab this Lawn Fawn Slimline Simple Hills stencil. It's for stenciling and card making, absolutely. But it also allows me to draw some really nice cables um, that don't look jank, quite frankly. I am not good at freehanding. In fact, last week I freehanded the um, ornament strings and I hated it. It's the thing I did not like about my spread last week. I should have used a ruler. My first inclination was to use a ruler and then I was like, don't be extra, just draw them in. And it's fine. I was able to kind of disguise most of the fact that I didn't like it, but you guys, I couldn't have drawn these like this and I love it. If you don't have stencils, consider, you know, maybe either cutting your own curved edge using a plate as a guide. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, I have the stencils in my stash and you guys might too. I know a lot of you are card makers. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate um, all of the new subscribers. I love you guys. Um, but a lot of you might be card makers and might have something similar that'll work. And so I just wanted to throw that out there that use what you have. Um, it really does make a huge difference. And I love, love, love my gondolas and the cables. I think it really completes the scene. So we're going to move on here to the second half of my spread. I tend to do my spreads this way where I will transfer one side of the spread and then I transfer the other side. And here is where I realized I should just go ahead and lay down my washi or cut, trim it at an angle. And then I ended up not liking fixing the left side of the spread. And the great thing about washi is that you can remove it and fix it, which I do fix it off camera. You're going to notice that in the finished card. I also put my wax paper back in place so I could kind of get an idea where I wanted my stencil to go for the second half of the spread. And I like to hold my two sheets together. And I accidentally drew that line a little long. I forgot to white it out um, in the finished spread, not in the finished photos. I didn't even notice it until after I took the photos. I do white out where I accidentally went past that line. And I liked doing the double cables. I thought it really added a lot of interest. 
So there are my cables. I can move my stencil out of the way now and I can continue moving these over. I did shift my gondolas a little bit and my mountains until I got it kind of how I wanted. I didn't press anything hard and fast down in place because it did take me a little bit of work to kind of figure out my placement. And then all, the rest of the cute little buildings. So we have two, like a house, it looks like, a shop, a truck, a tree, and a light post on the left side, which is a lot, and Mickey. And then on the right side of the spread, we have, it looks like another house, another shop, the reindeer barn, three trees, and many peeking around the uh, shop. I really like the combination of images on these sticker sheets, and I like that there is enough to build a scene. I used all the gondolas, I used all the buildings, and I think I used all the trees that weren't like a decorated Christmas tree, because I, I felt like these fit with the village type vibe and theme better, and I used all of them. And this spread was really done in phases because there is one thing I think completes the scene is the addition of lots of snowflakes, which I used pretty much all of the quote unquote very snowflake looking snowflakes from the sticker sheet. There are some that look a little bit more, I call them florally. Um, I didn't like them as much, so I didn't use those, but I used the snowflakes because I do think they kind of round out our spread. There's our washi tape. I think the addition of the black helps ground our scene a little bit, but I like the little pop of red and white. And then I'm still not super happy with that pink gondola. I feel like it's just hanging out there over in outer space. I need to move that. Um, let's add some little hearts coming up from our snow people. That's going to finish this scene. Um, the little blue heart I end up adding over the Mickey head just because I felt like that worked in the spread. I didn't cover up the word notes. A lot of times I do, but um, I think I will probably use my sidebar for notes for next week and that will work great. The one thing my spread is lacking that I almost always add is some sort of, I hate to say title because it's not really a scrapbook page or greeting because it's not a card, but I do usually add some sort of like quote or phrase and the sticker sheet really doesn't include that. So I'm gonna to need to find something that will work and fit with this design, um, and I will do that at the end, pretty much. And it did take some work. I had to go through so many sticker books to find something that fit with my spread. I probably should have looked into that first, but I kind of forgot. I was having so much fun building my scene. <laughs> I did move that ga pink gondola with the Yetis over and I like it so much more. And then here are my colorful boxes. So this again is from the Colorful Boxes sticker book and I think the colors along with the checklist match the Doodlebug stickers perfectly. And I definitely didn't wanna use anything too decorative because I think that would detract and take away from the Doodlebug scene that we've built. So I am going to uh, use pretty basic boxes here, but that's all you really need. We have a lot going on. This still provides lots and lots of room for writing in all the information for the week. And it's so cute. So I layered a couple boxes here on the right side. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, I have, those are like my two really busy-ish days as far as errands and appointments. I did think it would be fun to take a couple of the birds from the sticker sheet and I am going to use those to adorn some of my colorful boxes and you can see I added a few more there. Um, I actually I turned off the camera and I added a couple. I also added some little hearts coming up from the house and I added all the snowflakes. I'm so sorry. I did not realize my camera was off, but I probably saved you guys a lot of boring time, but I love the snowflakes and I think they add a lot. If you are trimming them to fit the area, make sure you use the excess. You'll notice that um, anything I trimmed off, I tried to fit in other places or I did fit in other places along the edge and I kept it within that 
kind of two by uh, seven box area along the bottom. Um, I found a Marian Bright that I think is going to work. This is from the Winter Sticker Book. I think it's last year's, I might be wrong about that. Um, here's the page it came from. Very basic, but again, we have a lot of color and a lot going on, and I felt like this simplistic uh, title worked perfectly. So here is my classic spread for next week, December 13th through the 19th. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me today. I wanna to say a huge shout out and thank you to all my new subscribers. I love you guys, thank you very, very much. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this content and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.